Today we are going to add the subtract items function to the inventory component. This will allow us to remove a specific quantity of items directly from the inventory system. Let's get started. Inside the inventory component, add a new function called subtract item at index. This function will be used whenever we want to remove a certain amount of items from a given slot. Move this function into the subtract remove items category. For now, keep it public so we can access it from other blueprints. Add a new input called slot index of type integer. This tells the function which inventory slot we want to remove items from. Add another input named amount to remove, also of type integer. This will define how many items we want to subtract from the target slot. Next, add an output called successfully of type boolean. This will return true if the subtraction was successful, or false if it failed. Now create space in the graph and place a branch node further to the right. To validate the target slot, call the get slot at index function using the slot index input. This will return the slot data for the given index, so we can process it if it exists. From the slot output, call a break s underscore inventory slot node, then hide all pins and show only the quantity pin, since that's all we need right now. Search for get amount to remove and call a less than or equal to operator node. Connect the quantity value to the second input of this node. This checks whether the player has enough items in the slot to proceed with the removal. Now we need to make sure both conditions are met. The slot must be valid, and the amount to remove must be available. So on the is valid pin of get slot at index, call in an operator node. Connect the result of the less than equals comparison to the second input of the an operator node. Then connect the result of this and node to the condition pin of the branch. This setup ensures that we only continue with the item subtraction if the slot is valid and contains enough quantity to fulfill the request. If the condition fails, connect the false exec of the branch to a return node and leave successfully unchecked. This ends the function early when the slot is invalid or does not have enough quantity to subtract. Now let's create a new function to handle the actual subtraction process. Add a function named subtract quantity at slot. This will perform the logic needed to remove the correct number of items from a given slot. Move this function into the subtract remove items category and make it private, since we will only use it internally within the inventory component. Add an input called target slot of type s underscore inventory slot. This represents the slot we want to subtract items from. Add another input called amount to remove of type integer. This defines how many items we want to subtract from the given slot. Now add an output called unremoved amount of type integer. This will return how many items could not be removed, in case the slot did not contain enough. This logic will be useful later, for example in crafting systems, where leftover quantities need to be handled. Break the target slot pin and expose only the quantity value. Then promote this quantity to a local variable and name it local quantity. Always store this value because after subtracting and updating the slot, we'll need the original quantity to calculate how much could not be removed, which is important for crafting systems later. Now connect the execution flow to continue. Expand the getter setter category on the left side and drag the set quantity at slot function into the graph. Connect it directly to the execution pin of our previous node to call it after we updated the quantity. Next, grab the target slot pin of the set node and drag it in as a get node. All we use this to tell the set quantity at slot function which slot we want to update. Then grab the quantity pin and search for a clamp integer node. The clamp integer node limits a number to stay between a minimum and maximum. We use it here to make sure the new quantity value never drops below zero or goes above the original quantity. Call a subtract node on the quantity pin from the break. For the value input, use the amount to remove variable. We subtract the desired amount from the current quantity to calculate the new amount that should remain in the slot. Then connect the result of the subtraction to the value pin of the clamp node. Now, connect the local quantity variable to the max pin. The clamp node ensures that the result stays within a valid range, in our case, between 0 and the original quantity. 
This prevents negative values or accidental overflows, which keeps our inventory data safe and reliable. Move the return node slightly to the right and connect the execution flow from the previous node. Since we want to calculate the unremoved amount after the new quantity has been set, we now need to perform a clamp operation. Call a clamp integer node on the unremoved amount output pin of the return node. This will ensure the value stays within a valid range. Copy the amount to remove variable and paste it twice into the graph. Connect the lower amount to remove node to the max pin of the clamp. This defines the upper limit, so we never return more unremoved items than were originally intended for removal. Next, call a subtract node on the upper amount to remove and use the local quantity variable as the second input. This gives us the difference between what was supposed to be removed and what was actually available. Connect the result of the subtract node to the value pin of the clamp. This ensures that if we couldn't remove the full amount, the difference is returned correctly, while still guaranteeing that the result never falls below zero or exceeds the amount requested. Next, open the set quantity at slot function by double clicking on the node. To make room, move all nodes slightly to the right, then remove the existing wire connections from the quantity and target slot input pins. To break the connections cleanly, hold the Alt key and click each wire. Add a branch node to the left side of the graph. Drag off from the quantity input pin and use an equal operator node to compare the value to zero. Connect the result to the condition input of the branch. This logic checks whether the updated quantity is zero and determines whether the slot should be removed entirely. On the true execution path of the branch, add a remove item from index node. This node removes the slot from the inventory if the quantity has reached zero after subtraction. Now reposition the break S inventory slot node to the left to make space for the incoming connection. Drag in the target slot input as a get node and connect it to the input pin of the break node. This restores the connection to the original slot data. Connect the slot index output of the break node to the index input of the remove item at index node. This ensures the correct slot index is used when removing the item. Then connect the false execution path of the branch to the set members instruct node. For the quantity input, drag in the quantity input parameter as a get node and connect it. This sets the updated quantity in the slot when it should remain in the inventory. Arrange the noted all clearly. I can't say it often enough. It helps a lot with troubleshooting. Finally, after the remove item at index node, Add a return node to exit the function early. Connect the output pin of the target slot get node to the slot input of the return node. This ensures we return the removed slot structure immediately after clearing it. Switch back to the subtract item at index function to continue with the main flow. Drag the subtract quantity at index function into the graph and drop it on the true execution path to call it. This function is used when the slot contains enough quantity, and we want to update it by subtracting the desired amount. Now drag the item slots variable into the graph as get node. Call on it the get copy reference node to get the slot from inventory. Connect to the index pin the slot index variable from the function. Then connect the output of the inventory slots get node to the target slot input pin. For the amount to remove input pin, connect the amount to remove variable. Now we are almost finished. With the subtract quantity at slot node, we subtract the amount that can actually be removed from the slot and return the remaining quantity with the unremoved amount output. This value tells us how many items couldn't be removed. Next, add a branch node directly after the subtract quantity at index node. From the unremoved amount output pin, call the equal integer node and connect the result to the branch. This condition checks whether all items were successfully removed from the slot. On the false execution pin of the branch, call and print string node. Set the message to. After removing the item from the slot, an amount remains. Something is wrong. This is a safeguard. In theory, this situation should never occur, since we already check for sufficient quantity before subtracting. But it's always good to double check edge cases.
Now connect the execution pin from the print string node to the return node. No matter whether an error occurs or not, we always execute the return logic. As mentioned earlier, this kind of error should never happen in practice. If it does, it usually means there's a bug somewhere in the overall logic. Finally, make sure the successfully pin on the return node is checked. The item was removed, and even in the extremely rare case of leftover quantity, we still consider the action as successful. We are finished with the setup, so go ahead and compile and save everything. Now it is time to test the functionality. Right click on the graph and add an input action for the debug key R. We'll use this to test the subtract items functionality. Then drag the BPC inventory component into the graph and call our subtract item at index function. If you've been paying close attention, you might already notice the problem here. Connect the pressed execution pin of the input action node to the subtract item at index node. Set the slot index to 1 which means we are subtracting items from the second slot, not the first. For the amount, we'll set it to 4, just for testing. At the end, add a print string node with a simple message to indicate that an item was subtracted when pressing the R key. Now start the play mode as a client, not as the server, which is important in this case. Give yourself a few items, open the inventory, and move the stone items to the second slot. That's slot index 1, which we defined in the test. Now press the R key a few times and check the inventory. You'll notice that items are successfully subtracted twice, and once only two items remain, nothing more is removed. However, as soon as we move that slot around, we suddenly see 10 stones again. So what happened? This occurs because we're playing as a client and we called the subtract item at index function locally. That means we subtracted the items only on our local machine, but the server was never informed. As far as the server is concerned, there are still 10 items in that slot. So when we move the item, the server corrects what it sees as a mismatch and tells us, hey, there are still 10 items in that slot. What we need to do now is make sure that the function is executed on the server, not on the client. Let's quickly set this up as a demonstration to show the correct behavior. Start by disconnecting the execution wire that currently leads to the subtract item at index function. Then right click and create a new custom event named subtract items. Call the subtract item at index function from within this event. Set the event's replication settings to run on server and check reliable, so we can trust it to execute properly during gameplay. Back in the graph, Go to the pressed execution pin of the debug key R input and call our new subtract items event from there. Now, let's start the play mode again, this time as client, which is important here. Give yourself a few items, move the stack of stones to the second slot, which is slot index 1, and press the R key a few times to subtract them. You'll see the item count decrease. Let's now move this slot downward in the inventory. And as expected, the slot correctly shows the updated amount. Only two items are left. That's because we are now handling the logic through the server, and the changes are replicated correctly to the client. Let's go through it once more. Give yourself items again, open the inventory, and move 12 stones to the second slot. Now press R repeatedly. We subtract items several times. Once you check the slot again, it's now completely empty. The subtraction was successful and synchronized. So now everything works as expected. It's extremely important to understand. This function must only be executed on the server. Clients must never call it directly. While it's technically possible to create a custom event inside the inventory component that calls this function and set that to run on server, doing so would prevent us from using the return values, like the successfully output pin. That's why this function remains public, and we make sure to control access by calling it only from the server side. That's the cleanest and most reliable way to ensure your game stays in sync. I would really appreciate it if you leave a like and consider subscribing to support the channel and help this series grow. It means a lot and keeps the tutorials going. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next episode.